All right, guys. It is a chilly winter night here in mid-October here in the collapse of global industrial civilization. It is a it is a Friday night. It is October 14th, 2022, and the, the cat always likes to join us on Friday. So you might think that Friday is time for my weekly ecological meltdown roundup rant where we check in with Rhett Butler and the boys and girls over at mongabay.com. But guys, I'm going to do something a little unusual. We're going to hold off on the Mongabay Roundup till tomorrow because we need to stop all of the presses for uh, it is that time once every two years. Once every two years, we are treated to the, uh, what do they call this thing? The Dying Planet Report, you know, from World Wildlife Fund, being joined by the Zoological Society of London for the Dying Planet Report of 2022. And uh, I'm going to put the link on here. And good God, guys, uh, this is a 60 page report with all kinds. We got charts, we got graphs. We got tables. We we got it all in the Dying Planet report. Uh, so it will take you, if you really want to plow through, it'll take about three hours to read this. So I'm just going to, uh, we're going to go grazing through the Dying Planet report 2022, this year titled, Building a Nature Positive Society. Yes. We are going to build a nature positive society. So I'm just going to sit here and blab for about a half an hour for anyone who wants to sit uh, listen to me reading this with my snarky doomer comments. This is, uh, we got some serious apocaloptimism here, guys. This is probably the uh, single biggest treasure trove of apocaloptimism that has come across my desk. And uh, you certainly will not find this anywhere in today's mainstream media. The Dying Planet Report, nowhere mentioned in the top 100 stories on the planet, I uh, in Yahoo News, the editors at Yahoo News decided that the death of a planet, you know, uh, who cares? So uh, I want to thank those little lefties over at Common Dreams for uh, reminding me that this planet is dying. So, uh, let's see, we'll just skip over the executive summary, and here is the executive summary, pretty much, and we're going to get, this sounds like plagiarism to me, code red for the planet and humanity, didn't that, uh, Doomer over at the UN I think this guy, who wrote this? Marco Lambertini. I love that name. Marco Lambertini is Director General of World Wildlife Fund International. And uh, Marco has a code red for the planet and humanity to kick off the dying planet 2022 report. Okay, take it away, Marco. The message is clear, and the lights are flashing red. Our most comprehensive report ever on the state of global vertebrate wildlife populations presents terrifying figures, a shocking two-thirds decline in the Global Living Planet Index less in less than 50 years, and this comes at a time 
when we are finally beginning to understand the deepening impacts of the interlinked climate and natural crises and the fundamental role biodiversity plays in maintaining the health, productivity, and stability of the many natural systems we and all life on Earth depend on. Mm. The Corona Panic. Yes, the Corona Panic has given many of us, well, I guess the 99.98% of us who did not die of Corona Panic, you know, those people, the Corona Panic has given many of us a new awareness of our vulnerability. This is beginning to challenge the unthinking assumption that we can continue to dominate the natural world irresponsibly, taking nature for granted, exploiting its resources wastefully and unsustainably, and distributing them unevenly without facing the consequences. Today, we know that there are consequences. Some of them are already here. The loss of lives and economic assets from extreme weather, aggravated poverty and food insecurity from droughts and floods, social unrest and increased migrant flows, and zoonotic diseases that bring the whole world to its knees. Yes. Nature loss is now rarely perceived as a purely moral or ecological issue, with a broadened sense of its vital importance to our economy, social stability, individual well-being and health, and as a matter of justice. The most vulnerable populations are already the most affected by environmental damage. Can you say planet nibbling? And we are leaving a terrible legacy to our children and future generations, plural, to come. Yes. We need a global plan for nature as we have for climate. Uh, is anybody out there aware of a global plan for climate? Well, maybe for the few people who listened to my oilprice.com roundup yesterday, uh, I think that was a very uh, good indication of the global plan for the climate. I guess that Marco is a fossil fuel investor who reads oilprice.com. Okay, so what is this glow? Oh, no, this is not a plan. This is a goal. A global goal. A global goal for nature. Nature positive. Yes, nature positive. We know what's happening. Yes. We know the risks and we know the solutions. <coughs> there you go. We know the solutions. Yes, we do know the solutions. It's uh, making planet Earth a human exclusion zone is the solution. That's the solution I know. I don't, I don't know what solution Marco knows. I know the solution. Get humans off the planet. Anyway, we know the solutions. What we urgently need now is a plan. We need a plan that unites the world in dealing with this existential challenge. A plan that is agreed globally and implemented locally. A plan that clearly sets a measurable and time-bound global goal for nature. 
as the 2016 Paris Accord with the net zero emissions goal by 2050 did for climate. Yes, but guys, this is not the onion, all right? This is the World Wildlife Fund. I, I, I am not making this shit up. But what can be the net zero emissions equivalent for biodiversity? Well, I guess net zero biodiversity by 2050. We're going to have a race here on the, on the dying planet as we gear up for the dying, the dead planet 2050 report. So now we're going to get in a race. We're going to have the net zero emissions uh, on one side and the net zero fellow earthlings by 2050 on the other side. Guess which one? is going to win. So I guess that is, I'm assuming that's what he's talking about here. This guy, Marco, he, he speaks in riddles. Achieving net zero loss for nature is certainly not enough. We need a nature or net positive goal to restore nature and not simply halt its loss. Firstly, is it firstly or first? Firstly, firstly, because we have lost and continue to lose so much nature at such a speed that we need this higher ambition. And secondly, because nature has shown us that it can bounce back, and quickly, if given a chance. Yet, I think more than anywhere on the planet that uh, nature has shown it can bounce back is the Chernobyl Ground Zero, you know, the human exclusion zone of Chernobyl. If you have to look uh, anywhere on this planet, uh, for nature bouncing back, it is the Chernobyl nuclear site. And you will see, if you want nature to bounce back, you exclude the humans from the zone, and nature will figure it out. So uh, I do agree with Marco that nature will bounce back. All right. We have many local examples for nature and wildlife comebacks. There you go. Chernobyl. And I guess the Korean DMZ is another one. Whether it is forests or wetlands, tigers or tuna, bees or earthworms, we need nature positive by 2030. Yes, we need nature positive by 2030, which in simple terms means more nature, more nature by the end of this decade than at its start. Yes, then it says see the explanatory infographic on page 100 but of course, there's only 60 pages in the report. There is no page 100. There you go. All right. We need more nature. Okay, by the end of this decade, more natural forest, more natural forest in eight years than we have today, more fish in the ocean and river systems, yes, more pollinators in our farmlands, more biodiversity worldwide. A nature positive future will bring countless benefits to human and economic well-being. 
including to our climate, food and water security. Together, the complementary goals of net zero emissions by 2050 and net positive biodiversity by 2030 represents the compass, the compass to guide us toward a safe future for humanity to shift, to shift to a sustainable development model. There you go. We're going to shift to a sustainable development model in the next eight years. Uh -huh. I guess Marco is, uh, is unaware that uh, the term sustainable development is the oxymoron of the 21st century. Yes. To shift to a sustainable development model to support the delivery of the 2030 sustainable development goals. There you go. So obviously there, there's a lot that you can see here, although it doesn't talk about it that much is that the United Nations uh, is a big player in the World Wildlife Fund. That uh, there's a lot of the, uh, you know, a lot of the same players, the same buzzwords. We have the World Wildlife Fund talking about the 2030 Sustainable Development Goals, which are unadulterated horseshit. Uh, as far as I know, and I somewhere in here, it admits that every single one of the Sustainable Development Goals, you know, for the 2010 to 2020, 100 percent of the sustainable development goals between 2010 and 2020 fell flat on its face, were a total abject failure. There is absolutely zero evidence that any one of these uh, sustainable development goals or these biodiversity protection goals, they, uh, every one of them are, are a complete failure. They are failing more monumentally and faster than ever. There is exactly zero evidence that one word of this unadulterated horseshit coming out of this clueless moron's mouth has any chance of ever happening. It ain't gonna happen. Not a bit of it. I just need to come up here, uh, you know, pretty much every day and say, ain't gonna happen. Ain't gonna happen. All right. But we have an unmissable, unmissable opportunity for me this is Marco, for me, for World Wildlife Fund, and for many other organizations, and a growing number of country and business leaders. Yes, e.g., the Leaders Pledge for Nature Group of 93 heads of state. Yes, and don't forget the business for nature, the task force, the task force on nature related financial disclosure, and the finance for biodiversity coalitions agreeing on a nature positive global goal and crucial is crucial and urgent. Okay, we have the politicians. We have the global corporatocracy, and we have the banksters behind it all, all agreeing on this. We're going to leave it to the politicians, the corporatocracy, 
and the banksters behind it all to save the planet. World leaders have an unmissable, an unmissable opportunity in December to embrace a nature positive mission at the long awaited, the long awaited 15 conference of the UN Convention of Biological Diversity in Montreal, Canada, under the presidency of China. The UN Convention on Biological Diversity in Montreal, Canada, under the presidency of China. Yes, this is key to ensuring the right level of ambition and measurability in the goals and targets of the government, uh, of the agreement, I'm sorry. Okay, it is key. So what is the key to making this one work? It is key to mobilizing and aligning, mobilizing and aligning governments, communities, businesses, financial institutions, and even consumers, even consumers, yes, consumers are, uh, the consumers are going to save the planet, and even consumers toward contributing to the same shared goal, inspiring, inspiring a whole of society approach. And it is key to injecting the same high degree of accountability, yes, that we are beginning to witness around climate action. <laughs> Oh, God, I want some of this opium this dude's smoking. Where do they come up with this shit? Just as the global goal of net zero emissions by 2050 is disrupting the energy sector so that it shifts toward renewables, you know, like... Fossil fuel emissions are the highest they have ever been in history, and the planet will burn more coal in the year 2023 than in any year in human history. You know, this is a couple of examples as the global goal of net zero emissions by 2050 is disrupting the energy sector so that it shifts towards renewables, nature positive by 2030 will disrupt the sectors that are drivers of nature loss. Agriculture, fishing, forestry, infrastructure, and extractives driving innovation and acceleration toward sustainable, sustainable production and consumption behaviors. Yes, where we're getting ready to, uh, what is it? I have heard everything, you know, in this, in this uh, shift to renewables, and this is not counting all the coal we're going to mine in the next year. They're talking about mining on this planet. I've heard everything will grow by three to ten times. There will be three to ten times more mines on this planet by 2050 than there are now. This is how we are accelerating toward sustainable production and consumption behaviors. Our society, as it is at the most important fork in its history, 
and is facing its deepest systems change challenge around what is perhaps the most existential of all our relationships, the one with nature. And all this at a time when we are beginning to understand that we depend on nature much more than nature depends on us. The COP15 Biodiversity Conference can be the moment when the world comes together on nature. Well, I guess we're talking about a big circle jerk on nature. I, yeah, I guess I can see the world coming together on nature. Uh, yeah, so we're going to have one big circle jerk at COP15. It's going to be one big circle jerk, and we're all going to come together on nature. Thank you, Marco Lambertini, for the single biggest uh, outpouring of unadulterated horseshit I might have ever read in my entire life. Okay, then, uh, see, the problem is so many of these things sound exactly alike. As I mean, it's why I didn't read the executive summary, because it sounded just like that other stuff. Uh, so, setting the scene. Yep. Well, we already know the scene uh, being set. Uh, little dog, I want to set the scene, please. Would you let me set the scene? I need to set the scene. Okay, now that the scene has been set. Yeah, so anyway, guys, I think you're getting the idea. Uh, but it is a pretty report. Okay, so there's three chapters. Chapter one, the global double emergency. Yes, the global double emergency. That would be the climate and biodiversity crisis. They break all that down uh, with all they have. They do have some pretty cool maps, I uh, will say. Uh, all of these, uh, I love this. The magic of mangroves. You know the mangroves that are going to be extinct in a few years. And of course, we, we, you know, we have the uh, social justice warriors. Okay, then in chapter two, they look at the speed and the scale of change. You, you know how uh, all of this thing, uh, all of this stuff is happening. Um, it is worse and faster than previously expected. Um, they look at the freshwater fish are the most screwed of all. If you had to pick the group of our fellow earthlings more screwed than any other would be freshwater fish. But of course the sharks and rays don't have it much better than the freshwater fish. Uh, I love this one looking at the question, how intact, how intact is nature in the year 2022? And then of course we cannot forget people and nature, uh -huh. which of course they have a major noble myth of the noble savage. Uh, good Lord, uh, the whole middle section of this talking about, you know, noble savages saving the planet, you know, all of which is their segue into chapter three, which is one, which is at least half, if not over half of the thing. Chapter three 
building a nature positive society. We know that the health of our planet is declining and we know why. There are eight billion reasons why. We also know that we have the knowledge and the means to address climate change and biodiversity loss. Yes. Okay. Uh, I love it. You know, looking for examples of, uh, of nature positive in the Amazon and the Congo Basin, two pilot initiatives are taking their first steps to, to turn theory into practice. Yes, holding up the Amazon rainforest and the Congo rainforest as two examples of hopium. Yes, don't forget about our right to a clean, healthy, and sustainable environment. Yes, where, okay, finally, on page 34 out of a 60 page report, on page 34, you never, you never see the word overpopulation, obviously, guys, it goes without saying, that the word overpopulation never mentioned anywhere in 60 pages on the Dying Planet report. Um, and uh, so then on page 34, they talk about direct drivers of, you know, planetary destruction. Uh, you know, things like land use change and pollution. And then we finally, indirect drivers, direct drivers are underpinned by a range of more indirect drivers, such as increases in human population and affluence. So according to the World Wildlife Fund, it is the increase in population and affluence are indirect drivers to the death of a planet. Yes, and then they do mention over the last 50 years the human population has doubled while the global economy has grown fourfold. I've heard 17-fold uh, and then you will never hear, you will never hear uh, even the word population ever mentioned again in 60 pages. The word population mentioned two times in 60 pages. But they do a pretty good job on uh, explaining the ecological footprint where they break down the ecological footprint for anybody who does not understand this. So according to them, there are six subsets of the ecological footprint. The carbon footprint is one of six subsets, one of six. Uh, for people who do not understand the difference between a carbon footprint and an ecological footprint. And then, uh, you know, they keep talking about all the ways we're going to hear. How about this one? Toward sustainable global supply chains. It is sustainable global supply chains, um, transformative change needs to place people and nature at its heart. Uh, then they keep going over to sub-Saharan Africa for views of how things, how we're going 
to uh, save the planet on the sub-Saharan African model. Uh, don't forget making technology work for the planet. Yes, making technology work to save the planet. More topium from sub-Saharan Africa. Here we go. The Amazon we want. A transition to sustainable development in the Amazon rainforest. Yes, next to that one, I've been over this one before, an urgent call to protect 80% of the Amazon by 2025. There you go. We're going to protect 80% of a rainforest that is already 26%, you know, doomed. Anyway, but we're going to wind up with the path ahead. The path ahead written by Gavin Edwards, Scott Edwards, Lynn Lee, and Guido Brokhoven. This is to wind up the Dying Planet report if Marco missed any greenwashing, hopium-soaked, apocalyptic bullshit. Let these guys close us out. The path ahead. The evidence presented in this edition of the Dying Planet report is clear. The pressure we, meaning humans, are placing on the natural world is driving an escalating nature crisis, which in turn is undermining its ability to provide crucial services, including climate change mitigation and adaptation. Our destruction of nature is also increasing our vulnerability to pandemics. Yes, blah, blah, blah. And don't worry, don't worry, there is still time to act. I did not actually ever read the words window of opportunity rapidly closing. Uh, I think finally at least the window of opportunity horseshit has gone out the open window. There is still time to act, but... Urgency is needed. A number of solutions are available, developed by many different stakeholders, from business to noble savages and local communities. Those range, okay, here we go. These are solutions. These solutions range from new financial disclosure initiatives yes, to better understand and align the impact of finance to the multi-use landscape approaches and case studies detailed in this report. The drivers of biodiversity are complex and cross-cutting. No, they're not. There is nothing complex about the drivers of biodiversity loss. It's humans. You can't get much more simple than that. There is one driver of biodiversity loss on this planet, while there's 8 billion drivers of biodiversity loss on this planet, and it is called humans. Humans. Okay. The drivers of biodiversity loss are complex and cross-cutting, and it is vital to acknowledge that there is no single simple solution. Yes, there is a single simple solution. If the problem is humans, the solution is to get rid of the humans, and the problem is solved. 
we just got to figure out how to get rid of the humans. <clears throat> oh, all right. <clears throat> it is therefore all the more important that the world adopt a shared goal for nature to guide and drive action across governments, business, and society. A global goal of reversing biodiversity loss to secure a nature-positive world by 2030 is necessary if we are to turn the tide on nature loss and safeguard the natural world for current and future generations. It must be our guiding star in the same way that the goal of limiting global warming to 2C and preferably 1.5C guides our efforts on climate. Yeah, such as mining more coal than in any year in history. Action. Yeah. Action to secure a nature positive world this decade, this decade, measured through an increase, one more time, by 2030, an increase in the health, abundance, diversity, and resilience of species, populations, and ecosystems can be taken by everyone and also adopted nationally and ultimately globally to urgently transform our relationship with nature. Encouragingly, momentum is building. We've got Greta Thunberg! Greta Thunberg is building momentum. Greta is teaming up with the noble savages to build momentum. I guess I heard that Greta Thunberg uh, is on record now of not shutting down nuclear power plants. Anyway, more than 90, more than 90 world leaders have endorsed a leader's pledge for nature, committing to reversing biodiversity loss by 2030. And the G7, the G7 have signaled their ambition to secure a nature positive world. Yes. The UN Convention on Biological Diversity's COP15 provides a momentous opportunity for world leaders to adopt an ambitious global biodiversity framework that drives immediate action for nature positive or a nature positive world when governments protect 30 percent of the world's land fresh water and oceans through rights-based and community-led approaches when they tackle the drivers of nature loss, yes, that largely originate in the other 70%, when they ratchet up their actions, if they are collectively falling short, and if they commit the requisite resources for conservation and sustainable, sustainable, use of biodiversity, then a nature positive world will be within reach. World leaders who have signed the leader's pledge for nature must play a special role in early implementation, leading the way, including by securing the necessary finance. <laughs> yes, and wrapping it up, recognition of the integrated nature of our environmental challenges in turn enables the search for win-win solutions again.
the science is clear. Immediate action to reverse biodiversity loss is essential if we are to succeed in limiting climate change to one and a half C. Mm -hmm. And climate change is expected to become a dominant driver of biodiversity loss if left unchecked. It will only be through identifying and pursuing solutions that tackle these connected challenges while also benefiting people, yes, that we will be able to course correct and secure a healthier natural world to help achieve the sustainable development goals, which we have never achieved one of. The Dying Planet Report 2022 provides a snapshot of the health of our natural world and our life support system. There are causes for dismay, but there are also causes for optimism. It must be our rallying cry for the urgent action needed to deliver a nature positive net zero emissions and equitable future for all. Yes. Anyway, guys, uh, I realize I am talking to myself and uh, I have to go uh, glug some Pepto-Bismol to stem the rising, uh, the rising uh, pool of vomit getting ready to uh, projectile out of my mouth here. Uh, th this was truly a, uh, th this was truly, is it a high point or a low point? Uh, anyway, guys, uh, you can go on the link and uh, take it from there. And uh, I can kind of see why the editors of Yahoo News declines to include the dying planet report anywhere in their top 100 stories on the planet today uh, because nobody gives a shit. Get out there uh, and enjoy your dying planet while you still can. Bye, guys. Yes, little dog. We will do the Manga Bay Roundup tomorrow. That's your favorite rant I know is the Manga Bay rant. Oh, my gosh.